Vitamins are certainly big business and even bigger since the coronavirus pandemic. One analysis from the United States revealed sales for vitamin C are up 146%. Makes sense, right? We all wanna do what we can to boost our immunity. So would taking a multivitamin every day keep us in top health? Sadly, it's not that simple. People would love to think that taking vitamin supplements had some magical sort of properties that was going to improve their health. But the reality is, eating a good diet, you actually get all the vitamins that you need. There are some exceptions, and we'll get to them shortly, but first, let's break down the science. There are 13 different vitamins that we need. Vitamins A, C, D, E, and K, and the eight different B vitamins. Without the right amount of each, we risk developing diseases. Vitamins A, D, E, and K are fat soluble, meaning they dissolve in fats and oils. If we look at vitamins like the fat soluble vitamins, we actually have large stores of that that will last for months, perhaps to years. Vitamin C and all the Bs on the other hand are water soluble, so they tend to be flushed out of our bodies fairly easily. But the majority of us do get all the vitamins we need from our diet. So the five food groups, fruits, vegetables, they're good sources of the water soluble vitamins. The cereal foods, we turn to those to look for our thiamine, some folate. Uh, we look at the meat, they're also a valuable source of vitamins. And then we have the dairy products, which are a source of riboflavin. Now, in addition to vitamins, there are other essential nutrients we need that are not made by our bodies. We're talking essential fatty acids and amino acids. We also get them from the food we eat. But I get it, you're probably watching this thinking, wouldn't it just be easier if I got everything I need from a tablet or a magic powder? Well, several scientific reviews have found that for most people, it is better for our health to get all of those nutrients from our food supply. Supplements typically only contain one active ingredient in isolation, whereas food brings together a whole range of different nutrients in different combinations, and that impacts how we absorb and use those nutrients. Global Science Evidence Check A 2018 review of many studies into the effects of vitamin supplements found no evidence that they had beneficial effects on preventing heart disease, stroke, or premature death. In some cases, certain supplements might actually cause harm. So remember how I mentioned that fat-soluble vitamins are easy for our bodies to store away? Well, because they can't be flushed out as easily as the water-soluble vitamins, they can become toxic in large accumulated amounts. Too much vitamin A, for example, can cause vision changes, bone pain, and skin changes. So what about the water-soluble ones? Well, most supplemental vitamins will pass straight through your system. There's a line there about your money literally going down the drain. But even excessive consumption of some water-soluble vitamins can have harmful effects. Way back, I think 1983, we started to see these reports of people with neuropathies that was coming from taking excessive amounts of vitamin B6 is pyridoxine hydrochloride. So it is possible with very large pharmacological doses that you could see a water soluble can lead to toxicity. And also, for example, in some cases, excessive vitamin C might lead to kidney stones. So we don't entirely let water soluble vitamins off as saying there's no toxicity associated with those. To be fair, they were extreme cases. Perhaps the oldest myth in nutrition surrounds vitamin C and the prevention of the common cold. Research shows it has no impact on how often you catch a cold or how severe it will be. It is true that people who regularly take enough vitamin C tend to have slightly shorter colds, say around half a day. And no, there's no evidence it helps fend off COVID-19. But before we write off all vitamin supplements as a waste, it's worth making this very clear. Supplements can have significant benefits for specific groups of people, such as pregnant women taking folic acid to help lower the risk of certain birth defects. Older adults may need more calcium, vitamin D and B12. And given B12 is only found in animal foods, vegans may also need supplements. I think if someone is not including all of the five food groups 
there may be a chance that they are going to miss out on some essential vitamin or mineral, but if they're going to take a vitamin supplement, I really recommend that they seek the help of a health professional who can analyse their diet to see if there is anything missing or not. I think it's actually quite a myth and perhaps a marketing ploy to say in these busy lifestyles that we're going to need additional vitamins. The bottom line is for most people, the best way to get all the vitamins and nutrients your body needs is through, you guessed it, a healthy and balanced diet. But if you're unsure about how your diet stacks up, get your nutrition status checked out by your doctor. Remember to hit subscribe for our regular videos. And while you're here, check out our past episodes.